Hey everyone, Fig Siege here. Welcome to part 2 of the Marvel Spider-Man analysis series. First of all, I want to thank you for the support on part 1. Your comments really make me feel good about being back. Before we dive into this video, I want to clarify some stuff. I know I said that the second part was gonna cover the second half of the game, but because I don't want the videos in this series to be too long as I'm taking my time to analyze Spidey's feats, I've decided to just go over Act 3. The last act and the conclusions will be on part 3 of the series, which I plan on uploading really soon. It's all a matter of quantity because I don't want to smush together a bunch of things just to fit the time limit. I like to take my time to give you guys a good analysis. Having said that, we're starting right where we left off, so I recommend you watch the previous video first and come back to this one once you're done. I'll be leaving the link in the description and up here so you don't have to dig around YouTube that much. Also, please keep in mind that I'll be summarizing the story to only tell the important details and to highlight what I think is worth. The name's Taskmaster, and you're about to get taken to school. I have a photo reflective memory. So if you want to take a look at the whole thing, I recommend you play the game yourself. And if by any chance you can't do it, then there's still YouTube to help you out. There are many gameplay videos out there for you to check. Okay, okay, enough of the intro. Grab your best popcorn, get yourself a drink, and let's jump straight into act number three, the downfall. All right, after chasing the helicopter, we have to go to the city hall because there is a ceremony. What? Ceremony. Okay, so in that ceremony is where Mayor Osborne will honor Jeff Davies for his incredible job at stopping the demons and saving Spider-Man. That doesn't go quite as planned though, because the Major receives a really suspicious call from a familiar voice. Listen, jackass, I get threats like this twice a week. Why don't you grow a pair and tell me what you want? To watch you suffer. And that's the face of realization right there. And to top it off, Peter Spider Sense also goes crazy, warning him of an imminent threat, or, well, multiple threats. But there is nothing he can do. Ah! Get down! Sadly for everyone, our favorite officer dies. And rest in peace, Jeff. We didn't have much time to get to know you, but I bet you'll always be remembered as the guy who saved Spider-Man. This event makes Pete and MJ realize that Martin Lee is behind the demons, so they get down to business and start investigating to find evidence they can send to the police. Thanks to MJ, we go to various places Martin Lee has invested in, and we find they're using consolidated shipping as a front to cover up their deeds. There's bombs, guns, and lots of tech. While we're at it, Silver Sable and her army get presented to us. You gotta do a superhero landing. Wait for it! <laughs> Woo! Superhero landing! Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Nice entrance. Solid 8 out of 10. Uh, 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 9 out of 10. <sighs> Yuri, explanation please? Yeah, Major Osborne has hired them to patrol the streets and to stop the demons, but we'll learn pretty soon that they're terrible at their job. <laughs> More on that later. Peter has an epiphany and goes to Feast to see if there's anything there that can incriminate Martin, because apparently what we just found isn't enough. In the shelter, Pete tells Aunt May about Miles and says he could work there, since he remembers it helped to stay busy when losing Uncle Ben. It's good to see Peter cares for the ones around him, even if he just met them. So, we go upstairs and after solving a puzzle inside of Martin's office, a really convenient hidden door opens, and voila, the evidence we need to arrest him. Oh, also, there's a Devil's Breath file MJ found at the auction house. So, after calling Yuri and letting her know everything we found, we meet with MJ at her apartment to discuss our next moves, and to see if we can reignite the flame with some good food. <laughs> Sadly for us, we get interrupted and Pete has to leave. Sorry to cook and run. Did did you just leave your clothes on the kitchen floor? Uh... Now, this next section of the story is kinda unnecessary to cover because the game makes us go to a bunch of places just to get to the important part. So, what we need to know is that this Devil's Breath was created by Oscorp and is meant to cure a bunch of diseases, but in its current state, it basically functions as a bioweapon. And there's also Morgan Michaels, who is the doctor that's been supervising the project, but because the demons are looking for him, Sable International will move him to another safe house. It's called GR-27, not... <sighs> Just be careful. In the wrong hands, this could... Don't worry, we're the best in the world. What the hell is that? Hostiles! Oh, Secure the package! Get him out of here! 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> the best in the world. So now they captured Dr. Michaels as well as the Devil's Breath, and we need to step in. Get off me! We got this! Yeah, sure you do. You see, this is what I meant when I said they're not very good at what they do. Anyways, this mission is pretty cool since we're fighting guys on top of a moving tank truck and there's the risk of falling and losing track of them either by getting hit or just due to a misinput. We fight for quite a while and then we get a cool cutscene of Spidey doing his characteristic pass through an arrow space move. I'll never get tired of that. I'll take this! So, Martin tries to possess Spidey or something and wants to make him feel guilty for not saving anyone at the ceremony. Hey, I said it right! And he even offers him to be a demon. I think it would have been pretty cool if we had an option to choose here, like in Web of Shadows, but still. Spidey refuses because he has a good moral compass and we fight him off. Now this part impresses me the most. He wakes up and in an effort to try and stop the truck before it runs over a lot of citizens, he shoots his webs to the side of the building and starts to pull, lifting the entire left side of the truck. Okay, there are a few things from this sequence I want to point out. First, Spidey, I really want to be optimistic here, but I'm pretty sure you helped them kill one or two guys without an expected turn. Second thing, I am totally impressed by the strength of the building's facade. Way to go, Eagle Gargoyle! And third, I found the model made for the game on ArtStation, kudos to Alexei and Alexandra by the way, which I'm pretty sure was inspired by the Inca's truck you're seeing right now. This exact truck weighs 15,000 kilograms, so let's suppose it's the same in the game. Now initially, I wanted to calculate the force by the exerts to lift the truck like that, but there are a lot of factors we have to take into account and I'm not professional in physics or anything. I also couldn't find any calculations out there regarding this scene, so the best I can do is to calculate the centripetal force Spidey generates with his webs in order to change the truck's direction, which roughly describes this trajectory. Okay peeps, fasten your seatbelts because we're about to start this physics class. And before you click away, let me tell you something, this will be important for the conclusions at the end of the series, so you better watch it. And if you don't, I, I will find you. you. And I, I will. will kill. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, please. <laughs> I promise this, it will not be boring at all. So, according to the centripetal force equation, there are two things we need. Mass and centripetal acceleration. Let's focus on the first one. As I just mentioned, the mass of the truck lays around 15,000 kilograms. And to finish our calculations, we need to add the mass of the people and objects inside the truck. And also Spider-Man's weight, since he's rotating with the truck as well. So let's say it's 16,000 kilograms in total. Now, all we need to do is to calculate the centripetal acceleration. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Well, not exactly. We're gonna have to chop this process into tiny digestible pieces so we can enjoy it. First of all, let's familiarize ourselves with the centripetal acceleration formula, where VL is the linear velocity and R is the radius, meaning the distance between the anchor point and the object that's rotating. Here, I chose to start with a linear velocity. To calculate it, we need distance and time. So, I grabbed my stopwatch, established some reference points, A and B, and played the video while starting the timer at the same time. Then, when the truck reached point B, I stopped it, and the result was 2.5 seconds. To find out the distance from point A to point B, I found the same street on Google Maps and roughly measured the length of the path the truck describes. Also, in real life, this building ends in a round-shaped corner, while in the game it's sharp, so I just added some extra meters to compensate. The result, as you see on screen, was roughly 40 meters. Now all that's left is to solve the equation, and we get 16 meters per second. But wait, the truck is also deaccelerating thanks to Peter's strength, so how would you calculate this with a change? velocity? The answer is... I didn't. I estimated the final velocity, meaning right before the truck crashes, and got the average between the two velocities, 16 and 14, which was 15 meters per second. I don't know if this solution is right, and I also kinda don't care that much. Again, I'm no expert, I do what I can. So now that we have our velocity, we need to estimate the radius. And I gotta say, I was overthinking it a lot, so uh, a friend came up with a beautiful idea. Bro, what if you look up the average sideward width on New York City, then you add that number to the width of the truck, and then you add both of those numbers to uh, Spidey's height, half of it, since that's where he's holding the web from, and then that should give you the distance from the web to the building. Hey, that's nice. So, that's what I did, and to my surprise, I found this page which had the width of every sidewalk in New York. Yep, that's right. So I located the street and found the length of the same sidewalk. 
3.8 meters. Now, the width of the truck is about 2.6 meters, and lastly, Spidey is 1.78 meters tall. Put that all in in this equation, and we get this result. R equals to 7.29 meters. But wait, that itself is not the radius, because Spidey's webs are diagonal to the ground, so what we just calculated is only one side of the triangle, and the actual radius would be the hypotenuse. It's time to use the Pythagoras theorem and find out what that actually is. I estimated the missing side to be 13 meters, and using the theorem we get that the radius is 14.9 meters. Whew, that was a whole process. Time to go back to the centripetal acceleration and solve the equation. And now, after all that, we're finally ready to calculate the centripetal force. Do you remember the formula? Good, then calculate yourself. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but if you start it, then let's do it together. We replace the values and we get that the centripetal force is 226,442 newtons. Isn't that incredible? I mean, for me it is. Okay, so the bad guys have the devil's breath. But don't worry, there is still hope for us. MJ is investigating the GCT thanks to a hint someone gave her while doing her job. Standard said the demons are looking for something at GCT, but what could they possibly need here? Should probably call Peter and let him know what I'm doing. Actually, scratch that. He'd probably just tell me to go home and chain myself to my laptop. Ah, uh, classic MJ, complaining about Peter all the time until she needs him. Like, I guess she's mad because he might seem overprotective at times, but girl, you gotta understand him too. He cares about you and can't stand seeing you getting too close to danger because if he lost you knowing he could have warned you, he'd never forgive himself. I mean, we even saw Peter kinda saying this in Edge of Time. You can't just ignore that she's in danger. Hey, I'm trying to focus on what's important. What's important is not standing by and allowing someone to suffer or die because you do nothing. If you don't get that, then you don't get the first thing about being Spider-Man. You're the one who doesn't get it, Parker. The future depends on my future is meaningless without her. Okay, back to this game. There's an Oscorp Tech Expo going on and the demons are planning on using something that's been exhibited. Turns out, they need this microdispersal device to use the Devil's Breath. Right as expected, a hostage situation begins, and now that MJ is in danger, she finally decides to call Peter for help. They work together, taking down some guys, and she defuses the bomb. Now, after bullying some guys, it's time to actually fight Mr. Negative. Finally. Sorry I'm late. It's kind of my thing. This is one of those times we can see Spider-Man's hand-to-hand -hand combat and durability. This boss fight really puts our dodging abilities to the test since we have to evade a bunch of Martin's attacks while also trying to get some damage on them. We start off pretty strong and as the fight goes on we see how Lee powers himself up sucking the I don't know what of his an old debt. Keep my distance for now. Ultimately, we knock him out, but in doing so, we break the train's brakes, so we need to stop it. No brakes? No problem. Sure, it's a thing all Spider Man can do, right? After all, so we did it successfully. So why couldn't you? Uh, it totally worked last time. <laughs> Wait, what? Yuri, they still doing construction on 42nd and 1st? Streets closed for another month. Why? <laughs> Okay, let's pause here and rewind real quick, because it's time for me to be a nerdy fanboy again. <laughs> I'm impressed by his quick thinking skills as much as the next guy, but dude, he broke and bent those freaking metal railings like they were, I don't know, an iPhone 6. Oh, oh. Usually, subway rails weigh around 50 to 60 kilograms per meter, and the portion he bends is about 2 meters, so double the numbers I just mentioned, please. Thank you. Okay, so that's the new weight, but how much force, or in this case pressure, would you need to snap and bend a metal rod like that? The answer is, and I hope I'm right, 550 newtons per square millimeter. So, yep, there you have it. Pretty strong. So, Martin Lee is sent to the raft and Sable's men are taking the devil's breath with them. Nothing could be better, right? Ah, freak, I spoke too soon. The devil's breath 
Devil's Breath is gone, but we got even bigger problems. Rikers? We have to hurry. Hop on. Here we go, the last highlight of this act, which I also consider is the best sequence besides the final boss fight. Maybe even better in terms of quantity, because there are a lot of villains. Alright, so everything is a mess. The whole population of Rikers is on the loose and we need to help the police containing the SKPs. After a bunch of punches, explosions and, well, chaos, the prisoners try to steal a chopper, which is why we have to stop it with our bare hands. And if you wonder why I'm not analyzing this scene, well it's because I already stated in my previous video that his lips are strong enough to hold the chopper's weight which lays around 5400 kilograms. And this is the same model, but with a police paint job. Right after this, we find out that Electro has escaped and is releasing everyone in the raft, including Spidey's strongest foes. There's Rhino, Hope you like surprise, Spider. Scorpion, this is too good to be true. Vulture, what? Vulture, long time no see. We're going to have so much fun. Sorry, no time to talk. And after a while, thanks to Yuri, we find out that Martin has escaped as well. Okay, I got the security cameras back online. How's it look? Well, it looks like the entire population of the raft has escaped. Including Martin Lee. That makes five of your worst enemies that are now on the loose. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, this means the Sinister Six are coming. Now, the most impressive feat of this highlight happens here, at the top of the raft. Spidey manages to fight through everything that's been thrown at him. But that doesn't last long. Scorpion's poison weakens him and everyone sees an opportunity to treat our friendly neighborhood as their punching sack. But this... This is what made me realize how durable and strong Spidey is. I admire how after taking that amount of hits, those 300 million volts didn't kill him. Tiny parenthesis here for your knowledge. Something to take into account is that the voltage itself isn't the one responsible for killing humans, but it's the current. As we see here, 42 volts could be enough to end someone's life, considering the current one person receives and for how long. Current is usually measured in amps. Just so you have the reference, 10 milliamps or 0.01 amps would be enough to kill us, due to the low resistance of our heart. But it isn't fatal since we have thick layers of muscle and skin protecting us. But if we reach higher currents, then I'm sure you know what happens. Okay, end of parenthesis. Now, we can compare Electro's powers to a lightning bolt, which is about 300 million volts and about 30,000 amps. Though theoretically, in the comics, he can only reach up to 1 million volts. Knowing this, we can definitely say that Spidey's powers are just out of this world. I mean, look at him. One hit more MP would have been history. <laughs> okay, let's move on. After dealing with Spidey, Otto goes back to the city to release the it's Devil's over, Breath. Norman. Time to give them the truth. Yeah, uh, I think you would have liked to put on the mask before releasing the you know what? 24 hours later and we learn that the city is upside down. Aunt May has apparently been infected while providing aid to those at feast. Sable International has forced a citywide quarantine while also fighting the escapees and Major Osborne has blamed Spider-Man for all the chaos, branding him a fugitive. This really is the downfall of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Uh, Alright guys, I didn't want to end this video in a sad tone, but I have to. I'm impressed by how much Peter has showed us so far. He's always there for the ones that need him. He also does what he can to help others despite briefly meeting them, which is something we saw at the beginning of the game with Gloria or here with Miles. I'm sorry for your loss. It also helps to have friends and family at his disposal who have the same goals of selflessness as he does. Like May, for example. She works so hard at feasts helping those in need that she doesn't care if she's sick. As long as she's bringing happiness to the ones around her, that's enough for her. And well, what can we say about Spidey? Peter brings that same altruism to his second identity, helping everyone in the city, regardless of whether he is tired or sad. He is a symbol of hope for many New Yorkers for that same reason. Hello, New York! <laughs> and if we talk about his powers, man oh man, so far he's definitely earned the superhero title from your boy Fake Siege. What do you say guys? I want to read your comments down below. 
I really hope you didn't have a math overload or something during this video. <laughs> also, remember that the conclusions of this analysis will take place in the next part, where I'll talk about his qualities and the math behind his powers, and where I would rank him amongst the other Spider-Men. Finally, leave a like if you've enjoyed the video, and subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss my other uploads. I'll be waiting for you in the next one. Fake Siege out.